Hi everybody, welcome back to Borderlands 3. My name is Mikey Dubs, and first and foremost, huge shout out to the comment section for my last video. I actually am just doing something a little bit new today where I'm gonna be reading the comments. The comment section has been absolutely amazing in the last few videos. Sorry, I dropped him down. One more grenade, maybe? Oh, he, he Yeah, we're fine. Okay, there we go. There's one one run in the books. Using Unleash the Dragon strats. I have read a whole bunch of the comments and I have them pulled up. I'm going to be reading them as we go here. And the first one here is from Casillas118. He says, if you're going to go the kilovolt route, it'll probably be faster to just kill yourself and respawn than save quit because he respawns when leaving the arena. So if I leave the arena, apparently he respawns. If I down myself with a fish slap, how is this going to work though? Because my pet, my pet will just revive me unless I unspec the skill. And I've tried the Mayhem route. I've tried to go the Mayhem route, but like swapping Mayhem 10 to 11, but it didn't work. So thank you, Casillas, for your input. If I, if I respec or go back to Sanctuary at any point, I probably will do that for the next time. Although that will make my farm significantly more expensive. Chuck, that should be a one hit. There we go. Now the second, the second comment was to stand inside of his shock circle. It's okay if I get down, right? No, he's get he he goes away. We should be fine here. Not bad. We were able to time it some of the time. We got a legendary. Let's see what we get. It's a nine volt. Sorry, not taking it. So if we were playing, if we were playing without pet revives or without pet in general, it's just toss fish slap at the floor, respawn, and re repeat. That would save us some time. All this time in between right here, that would save us some time. But the next one, the, the number one tech that I want to try for this farm comes from I, you and William 7702. If you stand in his shock force field while he dances around during his immunity phase, he doesn't teleport away. So I'm going to try to stand inside the force field so that he doesn't teleport away after the immunity phase. Go. So obviously we messed that one up. Cost me. Okay, cool. Oh, he's gonna give me a monarch. What's he gonna give me? A stopgap with regenerate five percent max health per second for a short time. Unfortunately, that has anti synergy with the stopgap because the regenerate five percent max health is actually a lot of health regen. It would be very good on like a health regen character or someone who only needs a little bit of health regen to get over health gate but unfortunately stop gaps stops you from benefiting from health gate in general so it is anti-synergistic in my opinion let me know if you think that there's an actual use for that but i don't think there would be okay so here we have another uh, the comment from obama game who comments a lot shout outs and says my guy has to have malicious intentions for needing all elements god will monarch okay i do want to clear up that i'm not really going for all elements however i'm missing out on probably a lot of damage right now with the way i'm specced out but I don't think it really matters if I... I'm not standing inside the shock circle. I'm just going to time it. Like a beast! Oh my gosh. I'm that dude. Yeah, I get rewarded with the God Roll Monarch. Okay, never mind. It's times four. Has a barrel on it. We're going to check it out. Okay, it has higher stats than my... My Cryo one, which is a good sign. I mean, it is not elemental though, so... Let's see what its actual stats are. Two, only two body accessories, except I would probably accept one if it was a times eight, if it didn't get the accuracy, which makes the odds on screen slightly a lie, but I would like all three body accessories. I was missing the accuracy one. For the barrel, it has two accessories. It has melee damage and accuracy bloom and damage. I believe it's missing one of those barrel accessories that damage one specifically. For the grip, this is not the grip at all that we want. Recoil height and accuracy bloom. We're going for damage here instead. Foregrip, this is not the foregrip that we want. Although the fire rate is nice. I think I do accept fire rate in my odds. Magazine is the same, 40 rounds, iron sights. So that's not, not the best roll, but I mean, it's a monarch and we got rewarded for what I thought was a, a pretty decent run. Ewan Williams says again, if you're going to go for the stinger, remember to bring a red fang com. It makes the crystal phases super easy as all the guardians get taunted to your pet and don't bother you whilst you charge the crystal. I believe I have seen that tech um, from a Killer6 video and something that he talks about all the time in like all of his flak videos is that specific tech takes to bring your red fang everywhere. 
so i i am a little bit versed in some of the builds I like as far as like amara and zane not really oh come on that timing was there the timing was there let's go we'll wait i am well versed in black builds in general not like all of them but the mainstream ones and in the red fang obviously being the the class mod that whenever you have gamma burst active your pet will taunt enemies i believe all enemies exactly like the comment said during the crystal phase when you have to stand in a specific location and those of you that are risk of rain two players know that when you're trying to charge the teleporter is very dangerous because you're stuck to a specific location so then that mode if the guys stick to a specific location but you're also on a timer you have to charge a bunch of crystals but they're all draining and they're in different spots so you have to charge one charge the next one and then charge the next one if you do them efficiently you can clear them um without much trouble like you can go one to the next to the next but if you get delayed at all meaning if you step outside of the, the one of the crystals and it's not charging or if an enemy gets inside the crystal zone it also stops the charge so that's where the real challenge lies is how do you get these enemies not only to not push you out of the zone but how do you get them out of the zone yourself and there's a couple ways you can do outright damage just like straight up damage when i play as moes i like to use the rocketeer com in general but especially during that phase because that's what that that's what the crystal uh, that's what the rocketeer com specializes in is you put iron bear out there just soak up all the enemies and it also one shots them while you one shot anything that gets close with you know whatever you want to one shot things with nice hit from the pet gets me the kill see that little right hook okay no drop yeah i am i'm a, i know about the red fang tech thank you though um monty leblanc says outro is banger this is an outro i got from nathan likes chicken on youtube at nathan likes chicken he does pokemon showdown content mainly which is pretty cool I've made some Pokemon monotype teams. I am I do like competitive Pokemon. I should drain, yeah, I was gonna say. Okay, but now we we'll just do it the Mikey Dubs way. Where we see which way he's strutting. Watch the strut. Watch the strut. One shot. Come on, it's the Mikey Dubs tech. And then Pat gets the final hit with the left hook. That's some tech. You watch which way he's strutting. It's that way your your grenade is guaranteed to hit. Correct? Or am I correct? Benny Adenugba says, God roll on second try is crazy. And he says, the X4 Monarch is better than the X8 overall. It is more ammo efficient and requires less reloading. Also, Vladoff AR's reload speed can be annoying, especially if your build doesn't spec five points into the reload skill in the purple tree. I do have the five points in the agility training. I usually do take it. Coupled with second intention which gives us reload speed and a bonus if the flak scores a critical kill, which we're hoping to most of the time. This gives us 23% um, reload speed plus 40% reload speed, which is 63% reload speed. And I can couple that with a Vladov Company man, which gives me mag size for 40%. Fire rate, which is kind of unlucky. I'd rather have something else besides fire rate there to, to like maintain a times eight uh, Monarch. But damage 50% is perfect. And 22% reload speed gives us a total of, so 88% reload speed. Really not too bad. I'm hoping that I can get times eight specifically for the stack bot. I already have good monarchs um, for everything else. I want one that synergizes well with the stack bot. And to do that, oh, sorry, Pat. I threw us off our rhythm. This one's on me. But maybe, maybe there's hope. Let's throw my action skill into the wall here to make sure that I get the bonus. Right? Oh, but he disappears. Okay, okay. I thought maybe I had to do damage to him, but I'm not too sure that is the case. But I want a Monarch that synergizes with the stack bot, and I want to stack the stack bot instantly and shred bosses with a with 16 pellets at a time. That's what I want to do. And I'm not against going Terror Anoint on it. Like, I don't think you necessarily need, like, consecutive hits or whatever, you know, whatever the best one is. I think I might even go Terror Regen, because I, I think the extra time that you get inside of Fade Away with those bullets to the terror region anoint will give you could be fairly valuable the problem is how do you get terror on yourself that's the real issue because it's on action skill and apply terror to yourself every th two seconds over 18 seconds or every th every three seconds over 18 seconds it might be two seconds so you have to wait six seconds after your action skill ends to have the maximum terror ammo regeneration
So I want a times eight monarch. I do have a times eight monarch um, over on my on my Moe's. I might have given it to a buddy, but it's like it was a very low roll. wasn't very good. I think it had a consecutive heads on it. I'm not too sure, but I didn't I didn't like it personally. Orion says, been farming a perfect corrosive times eight for a bit now. Hope you are luckier than I am. Hey, you know the if you look at my odds on screen, and then you multiply that, I think it's like whatever your percentage for your specific element is like uh, yeah like the odds to find your specific element of this type is is not not very high so i think that's a good toss and pet gets the left hook so the odds are not very high unfortunately but i want to oh, hey can i take a look at that please i want to take a look at that dead eye if you don't mind catch unleash the dragon is so broken all right clawing vulpin dead eye Unfortunately, this is accuracy. <laughs> Tour weapon projectile speed is kind of funny, though. Honestly. Like, that no meme would make, like, a back burner. Wouldn't that turn a back burner into something, like, just catastrophically, catastrophically damaging? Something like that? Best of luck to you to Orion on your corrosive times eight farm. <laughs> you might not ever get it. I'm going to be honest with you. You might not ever see it. Uh, Bailey Lovich says you can also just fast travel back and he respawns if you save the menu time if you want to save the menu time Okay, so after next run we will check that tech from Bailey Lovich. I like that The fast travel back tech Could be huge oh, almost a one-shot Hey, watch the strut watch the strut Guaranteed hit mm, Look at that. It's the monkey dubs tech it's like, hey, by the way, you can, you can stand inside the circle. It's like, I could stand inside the circle or I could just be good at the game. Oh, I completely forgot to try the tech. That's on me. After this round, we will do the fast travel back tech and see. Okay, watch the strut. He's strutting there to there. Guaranteed hit. Boom. Oh, but I was a little bit late. Okay, you're right. Okay. Uh, technically, it would be more efficient, I think, to just do it the normal way. Let's just let, let my ally revive me. I don't think I have to kill any enemies around for this to work. I think I can literally just wait for him. Yeah, there he is. Pow! Honestly, just a pretty easy farm. Is that a monarch? No, it's a hyper focus, whatever. So, here's the thing. I feel like I'm going to die if I try to fast travel out, like, instantly. Maybe not. Ooh, not the Sanctuary. So, Bailey Lovitz says, if you, you can also just fast travel back and he respawns if you want to save the menu time. Where am I fast traveling back to is the question. It's the only fast travel station I have is back at the start of Lecture City. And I get if, like, if, if you're really down bad, you might do that. There's no fast travel station for me, but I appreciate it anyways. What's, what you got for me? Let's see. Hoya! Cuminator. If you're looking to change up BO3, look at the Redux mod. Okay, yes, I do remember reading this one. Give me a second to just one-shot kill a vault. Oh, okay, you're right. I'm, I'm a terrible player. You're absolutely correct. It changes the game a lot. It changes lots of guns, adds new ones, and removes anointments while trying to balance the game without them. I'd be down to watch a playthrough with it. You know, I have played Redux. At, um, I think I did respond to this comment. I have played Redux a bit. Uh, I, I believe I, I played with my Moes through Redux. I think I, I think I might have farmed like a whole new endgame character was about what I did with Redux. I'm not sure if I ever did a full playthrough with Redux. But I farmed an endgame character from scratch, I believe, with Redux active. And it was a fun time. I thought that Redux was a, a breath of fresh air. But there's something about this kind of game that makes you want it to be shareable. Right, it's, it's that RPG element, right? It's that, oh, look what I got. Show your friends type element. Oh, it's early. No, just on time. Just on time. Sorry, I stole my pet's left hook, but Doobie is what it is, Doobie. You know what I'm saying? So I did like Redux. And I remember uninstalling the game for a long time after Redux. It must have been after Redux because when I came back to the game, I had no anointments on anything. And I was like, I'm on Mayhem 10, 11. Like, I'm not getting anointed gear. 
what is going on so i went to the reddit page i found someone with the same problem they said you probably have redux installed thank you reddit so i did like redux and in fact wonderland's redux i think at least transforms the berserker class my favorite class to like an actual functional usable character in the end game um which was really really fun i was able to clear chaos chamber 10 with it and clear all the raids in the game or like all of the all of, all of the content in the game this boom saying is immune to fire damage or something go down homie what, what did i get a nine volt okay i was gonna say so wonderland's redux is something i i strongly encourage you download just because it transforms the end game of that game to something achievable something that is challenging enough that you have to have the best gear to go after at least for my build i could have beaten it i could have beaten the i don't want to spoil the, the ending i could have beaten chaos chamber 10 with lesser roles but it would have taken me a lot more time because even the last fight took me for mm, i forgot how many rotations of my action skill my i had my i did a dreadwind beyblade build so i was just spinning around to spin to win berserker right and i, I coupled that with the movement speed from the stabomancer and the crit damage and I, this things go boom right just and then well, things more get they go boom because they're icicles but they get shredded if they're tanks that being said when it came to the big bosses it wasn't always a one a one combo sometimes it would take me a couple combos but I was happy with with where it was and especially because of the how the double jumping mechanic worked in Redux they added double jumping which I thought was amazing because then I could double jump and I could use the the snow spell that puts like a, an aura of ice around you that freezes enemies and because you're playing berserker that's a very efficient ice bubble so with double jump and dreadwind active i was able to double jump up to the birds and then freeze them down right but it wasn't efficient until i got the cooldown reduction of my capstone and like end game stuff going on so it wasn't broken immediately but it this gave me a way to deal with birds like that was like what i liked about it it was a melee build that could deal with birds because you could double jump because of redux and you can keep spinning and kill them so it's a really really cool mod uh, i very much like redux i don't see myself revisiting redux bl3 but if i'm playing wonderlands my immediate my immediate go-to is redux at this point I still am a firm believer that if Wonderlands had kept pu pushing uh, Vault Hunters or kept pushing Fate Makers, that the game would still be alive. And it's because of the magic of the multi-classing system. That being said, I don't blame Gearbox for not keeping it alive. I don't. I don't. I don't blame Gearbox for not keeping it alive. I honestly think that the the event system of the raid like that the the way that the shark raid was supposed to go was that each week it got harder and progressively harder i honestly think that if they had released that the way they were supposed to that the dlc would have a completely different is a completely different outlook for on with from players because instead we got all four sharks um on the first week and then they tried to take them away and say, oops, it, it's like a no. And at the same time, it was I the season pass. I don't remember the, the full price. Let me guys, let me know in the comments what the full price was for the season pass. I believe it was $60, but it could have been 15. Uh, I believe it was $60, which meant each of these DLC packs that they promised us in the season pass. I believe the season pass was was four DLCs in one character. But it could have been four DLCs and two characters. I really do not remember. And so here comes DLC one, right? It's it's going to be the handsome jackpot. It's going to be the guns and loves and tentacles DLC. It's going to be fantastic foster cluck. It's going to be the claptastic voyage. It's going to be a tiny Tina's assault on dragon's keep, right? It's a DLC one, but it's got big expectations because Wonderlands is maybe the best base game they've ever created in my opinion i thought i thought the move 
the fantasy from the sci-fi world was a genius genius modular melee weapons spells instead of grenades i mean are it just works perfectly i think maybe one ring slot instead of two personally but i get wanting to have like i get wanting to have one slot that's you know both or having two rings on your characters like it's a world of warcraft thing you know i see fade away active weapon handling on that monarch right there we're gonna be checking it out okay gotcha juke city welcome population you all right let's see the times four while fade away is active can greatly increase accuracy and handling here's the thing i know it's terrible because it's non elemental and it's less damage than my cryo and i believe cryo is supposed to be second most damaged behind this one so it is what it is there you go next yeah that's so that's for that redux mod um i don't think i'll be re-downloading it for bl3 but maybe Jana Johnson says, been farming the true proving ground supremacy for a fine arm monarch, and it's been like 300 plus runs and still don't have it. That's just completely unlucky. And there's a response from Benny saying, nuts, I've gotten only a non elemental and a fire god roll X4 one. Crazy. Yeah, so people are doing the trial of, what is it? The trial of supremacy route for theirs. Um, I'm not too sure that's, that'd be the route I am going. I don't know if Kilovolt. The way people are talking about people are saying like if you're going to go this route then um you should do it this way or like oh i'm doing it i'm gonna be going to the true prior the the true trial for mine like there's i, I, I guarantee you there's like different odds for each one but just becomes down to how much time can you use really that's just a super unfortunate death this is just not a clean kill at all let's clean it up for this back let's make sure this this last throw is a good throw Bonk. right in his toesies Okay, any rewards us for the god roll monarch <laughs> okay so it's not gonna be perfect Let's check out this vicious monarch the blades on there three body accessories three barrel accessories good grip incorrect Four grip is fire rate i think i would take it but I'd, honestly i'd rather have damage and accuracy not there so incorrect at the end of the day it is what it is we go again yeah so it, it seems like there are people that are that are farming the monarch right now which is crazy this is awesome that's perfect for me like i am hey look at me i'm i'm farming the monarch and then i'm recording it and i'm posting it on youtube for people to watch like hey perfect i'm really happy for you guys enjoy your farms that's awesome um Cla claudia I'll, I'll get to your sec comment in a second let me just one shot this boss real quick toe shot later kiddo okay don't die to my own grenade. Watch for the strut. Watch for the strut. Right here. This is home right here. And we toss. Look at that. And and the right hook. Okay, nice job. Ugh. No drop. Just get good at the game. So Claudia says, I know it's a long shot, but when you're happy with your flak, would you do this type of series on other characters? You know, I think so. I think so. Because that doesn't have to be like... I don't have to make a series that says like, you know, ultimate Amara day one. You know what I'm saying? I can just, I think I can, that can just be insinuated when you get here, you know? I'm just talking, I'm sitting here talking about Borderlands, right? So I don't need to do that style. However, I understand why, like these people have survived in the space for a long time doing this style of content. I'm a little bit off on my toss here that's gonna cost me it's gonna cost me dearly dang i just clear up these guys i mean it's there's a there's a percent chance that these enemies will drop a a monarch so we might as well predict it oh okay okay there's the there's the kill excuse me pardon me <laughs> maybe the kill of old route isn't the way i mean i'm not against switching routes you guys saw from my skull masher farm that originally i was farming tink of cunning and then i swapped over to to mayhem swap spamming uh first time killing iso the invincible to fill my lost loot machine like i was full degenerate farming that all right watch the strut in position when in doubt, spam it out. 
Oh, dang. Catch. Hey, I said catch. You're not supposed to jump over it. I, for the fish slap, are there other delivery methods besides this one? I don't think so. I think this is like the one. Predicted. What? Where's my prediction there? I swear I hit him. That being said, taking out Killavolta is funny and fun. But I'm sure there's like one shot methods, right? If I if I brought a toboggan, a 0.m, and a radiation kick charger down here, would I one shot this boss? Let me know in the comment section. Okay. On his toesies. There we go. That's a nice hit. Which way are you strutting, homie? This way? That way? This way? Gotcha. That looked perfect to me. That looked pretty much perfect to me. Okay, we're just gonna chill out. Catch. Predicted. Of course, when I actually stop to do, when I stop, it's when he spawns. Oh, a monarch. It's a times four though. Can I please get my get my first times eight? Still have seen no times eights. And even when I get the times eight, it's a pretty low chance that it's the one I want. So it's a fire monarch. That's pretty cool. Let's check out its parts. It has the blade, which is a sign. I got to learn other parts besides the blade, though. All body accessories. Very cool. Like that. The barrel. All three barrel accessories. Sick. The grip is the incorrect grip. The foregrip is the incorrect foregrip. Rail is the correct rail. So this one's missing grip and foregrip. Well, the, this grip should say times eight. So honestly, for, for a... For a times four fire, this is one piece off perfect with this four grip being the way it is. Other than that, it's really, really strong. Sid Money says, you just missed the black market for it. Dang, I, I, I read your comment and I said stop in my replies just because, come on, the black market is such a nice place to farm for premium loot. I think I might have seen it and that, that might have been one of the reasons why I decided to come back. I was getting the itch a little while back. And honestly, seeing that in the vending machine might have been like something that like brought me back, but I don't think it was available um, when I actually got here. I go for if I if I go for like a a super long shot. Boink. Is that gonna? Can I one shot this guy? Let's try it. So, missing the black market for the monarch is it's 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 just terrible because then you can get like five mon or usually like what what like three monarchs guaranteed in the vendor that you can save quit reload i think that's how that works so that's really terrible uh in the field says so why isn't the 12k x4 the best non eight pellet monarch my guy um i think he was talking about there here's the 12k here's a 12k times four let's check out the parts then three body three barrel good grip this grip can roll damage if it's a times four this four grip can also roll damage so this this is a this is a times this is a 12k times four so it's like so he says why isn't the 12k x4 the best non eight pellet monarch my guy i think it's just because this one's missing parts and i think that's why i said in my replies that this is it's just missing parts um he might have been referencing like a different one that i got maybe this one let's see is this the same one it could be i just think i have another one here somewhere Here's one right here. This is this is my current one. I think this is my current one. This is consecutive hits, 1289. Only two body accessories. This one's miss, missing a body accessory. It's a damage one as well. I don't even know how this thing got to its damage value. Its back half's got to be insane. Yep. Well, not even. Crazy. So you can get you can push some pretty high numbers. So yeah, just there's, there's just a bunch of examples of the 12k. If you meant, um, I'm, I'm assuming that you meant maybe, oh, he might be, maybe he meant non-elemental or maybe he meant elemental. The cryo is the next highest damage value. And I don't think, I don't think it can push 12k. I don't think it can push 12k because this one has all three bodies, all three barrels. It's grip is damage. It's foregrip is damage. It's rail is reload time. This is God roll cryo. And cryo has the, besides non elemental, cryo has the highest damage values of any weapon element. So this is the highest damage non elemental times four you're going to get. 
and this is or and the and non elementals so far that I've seen, the highest damage I've seen for non elemental is that twelve eighty nine times four. So you but you can get other rolls like twelve twenty sixty twelve two sixty six. So I think that's why I said in my comment it like, it's all about the all about the parts. It's all that matters. Let's go for a long distance. Long distance. Stop moving around. The one shot. Oh, imagine a world though. Catch. Yes, let's go. Okay, so as as of the making of that of this video, that was the last uh, last comment. So hey, thank you guys for all the comments and everything that you left in the in the previous vids in the in all the comments that I've ever been receiving. I'm I'm maybe gonna be putting all those comments up on screen which would be i think it'd be a kind of a, a cool quality of life thing but i'm super excited i'm super excited to get this this scatterable monarch farm going i yeah i would like to get every, one of each element but at the same time i'm kind of into like trying to get a, a god roll peregrine i still don't have i pushed a little bit through the dlc4 i'm at the castle crimson right now um so i pushed a little bit through it not very much at all but I've had Schluter on the whole time as I'm just doing story stuff. Catch. Oh my gosh, what a toss. What by a toss, I mean like a not the good kind of throw, but the bad kind. What is that? Malik Spain. Okay. So I would like to get myself a peregrine that has like action skill damage, action skill cooldown, and melee damage on it. Like that could be pretty good. Action skill damage, action skill cooldown, and grenade capacity. Could be cool too. Toss some long distance. Oh, that got him to one hit. One hit. Toss me. Okay, now we're learning. We just have to get the lineup. Once we get the lineup, it's over. Once we, that's an echo. I'm pretty sure that's a dead. That's a dead. A dedicated drop from Motan. As we just let it go, gone forever. It's gone. Wait, no, lost loot machine. I could get it back. I could get it back. Very, very cool. Yeah, thank you all for the comments, reaching out, and you know, being with me on this adventure. One of my buddies just got his first cloning maddening tracker from the vending machine, and reroll the anointment to the on grenade throw. Congratulations to B Grant A on Steam. I think he's on YouTube too, but he does um, other kinds of YouTube stuff, I think. D&D &D related. Cross me. Boink. Oh, come on. That's a, that's a cheat. An actual cheat. Catch. Oh, my, my, my racks are going to the crowd. Racks. Dude, the racks are so inconsistent. All right, now you're gonna, now you're gonna learn, buddy. Send death. Okay, eventually I will I will try the tech where I stand inside the circle. I just don't know when that will be. But we're looking good. We are looking good. I mean, we haven't seen a times eight monarch yet, but that is only going to make the grind that much more rewarding in the end, right? Early. Boink. Get me there. Oh, come on. Cross me. Uh-oh, I missed him. I got him. Yes, left, right hook. Nice job, Pat. You should get bonus XP anytime you're your pet because the final hit on a boss. Yes or no? Because you're learning as a pack. Just saying. Let's plan to put that out there. My build isn't even optimized. I could go respec in Sanctuary and come back with a little bit more elemental damage, and I think maybe that might do the trick. Let's try aiming right that above that center line. Will that do the trick? Not quite. So like right at that guy's crotch, basically. Cost me. Ooh, I did a little bit of damage to him. I think that must stood up. I gotta aim it a little bit different. I'm just trying to get a, a, at least one. 
one uh, metric to go off. Like, look at that. I aimed my Rax directly at that dude. And he just not there. Okay. Let's try to aim a little bit differently. I think that if I respec and take more points in the blue tree and get down to this skill that gives me bonus pet, or I get more pet, bigger percentage pet bonuses, which will give me more elemental damage with the Scorcher, then I might be able to push more damage than I'm currently pushing. Aim a little bit lower this time. Boom, it's a one shot. Let's go. Okay, I actually aimed a little bit left. Very cool. That's a one shot. No. Okay, hold on. Everyone, hold your horses. Hold your horses. I don't think that we'll ever get this that consistent. But let's try. All right, step one. Drop down. Step two, throw racks at wall. Step three, take a step all the way back. Step four, aim at that little black dot in the center. Okay, not quite. Not quite there. But if I just spam... Honestly, if I just spam these from back here, wouldn't that just work? Okay, maybe that maybe it's just way faster just to do it that way. Just to stand back the entire time and spam. Okay, sorry Zane players, but we're not taking a look at that class mod. I don't care what the rolls are. I do not. I do not care. Let's roll. Something... I, I gotta check how much time I'm recording out. Let's see. Okay, so I'm at 44.13, I, and I think I'm going to be cutting some stuff out anyway. So I do have time to talk a little bit about the, the PAX panel that I caught a lot of. Not all of, but I caught a lot of. And I just wanted to like briefly just go over the, the, different, the different points that I was thinking about when I saw it. Uh, that did not work. And I'll just, I'll just go right into it. The first 30 minutes, which I didn't catch a lot of, I'll be honest with you. I was, I was with my fiance, and we were doing other wedding stuff. And so when it came down to watching at that point in time, didn't really have a chance. However, I did watch, I did listen to a part of it, and I did see a part of it. And I, I felt bad for the contestants, and I felt bad for the people on stage trying to put it together, and I felt bad for the audience. I just felt, I just, I honestly just felt bad for everyone involved. Because the Sam Winkler was up there. He was in the back doing his thing. And I'm sorry, I do not. I wasn't there when she was introduced. So I don't know her name. I should go back. But when she, she was trying to, you know, she was trying to bring the energy, you know. Oh, no, one shot. Betrayed. Betrayed by my own kind. Okay, let's toss where he, he's always going to end up back in the middle, right? Just keep spamming in the middle. He still gets away. I got my toss direction must be messed up. So we just take this time to spam out our action skill. I mean, it's it saved us grenade ammo in the future. And here he is. Oh, right in the middle. Pow. Okay, we got a monarch. It's got a blade on it. It says vengeful. The times four, only ten thousand. Yeah, it's it's gonna be one of the worst rolls you've ever seen in your life. I guarantee you. I'm not even gonna bother with it. So I did feel bad for everybody because they were trying to bring the energy. They they were, and they had the cosplayers on stage, and the cosplayers. They they were great cosplays, but when it came to. You know, participating, they just didn't have the same level of coordination and stage presence and everything as the main hosts. So the main host, you know, was like telling everyone to like get excited for stuff, right? Get excited for what we are, what we're giving to you, right? Oh my gosh, the one shot. You know, get excited for what what it is we are giving, offering, right? And it was like different small prizes and things like that. And honestly, I think that the prizes are pretty cool. Like it was Borderlands related prizes, stuff that I would be happy to have. Um, but if I wasn't a Borderlands fan, I I wouldn't really be. I mean, I guess, aren't most people in that in that specific part of the showcase Borderlands fans? Or how does it... I'm not too sure how it works. I, I believe most of them would be Borderlands fans, hopefully. Uh, that's a pretty easy lineup right there. I think that'll get a one-shot. Yeah. I'm just aiming... What was I aiming? Like, right there? Okay. 
Now we're evolving our gameplay. Sleeping Giant with consecutive hits. I mean, listen, we take it. But it's not going to be the, the greatest of all time. So I'll start there. The first half hour, it, 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 it was what it was. It's, listen, it's not the worst we've seen. Okay, that was at least like... We've seen Randy Pitchford go up there and do magic tricks, okay? <laughs> I love Duval magic, okay? <laughs> love me some some Duval, some Duval magic. But when you're super excited for Borderlands news and you get Duval magic, it's not that you don't like Duval magic. It's just that you're hoping for some Borderlands news. And to be fair, they usually give some. So the, the second half of this showcase was... Uh, the heads of the different development teams. I think that, as far as I'm aware, like these were some of the top top team leads. I think these are the the team leaders. And the team leaders have a team lead who's the person who was introduced at the beginning, and that person reports to Randy Pitchford. I believe that's the chain of command. So I think we saw we didn't see Randy, but we saw one down from Randy, and then the four we saw the squad. Basically, how I see it is we saw the like the platoon commander and the squad leaders. And from the the different squad leaders had different points of view from the different things that they were talking about, which is pretty, pretty cool. We saw some people that were game character designers. We saw some people that were like kind of game like game philosophy stuff was like what what's like the overall scheme of what we're going for and then we saw Lilith's creator so like people that are specifically involved in creating vault hunters and we saw sam winkler the lead narrative uh the narrative lead of borderlands someone that in the community we do already know because of the controversy with sweet baby ink so these were the designers that were up there and they talked about a lot of cool stuff. I'll be real honest with you. They talked about a lot of cool stuff. Some of the, the spotlights to me were was the talk about the the plot. So there Sam Winkler told us that it's this is Alpus. This is the moon Alpus crashing into a cloak, like a veiled cloak. All right, that was the information that he basically gave us. Like this is it's a, I should get a one shot here. Yeah, as long as I spam the grenades from back here, it, it goes completely fine, I think. It's cool. Very cool. All right, go back. Also, let me know in the comment section, does the fish slap benefit from grenade damage bonuses? Should I be going for grenade damage bonuses on my Peregrine? I feel like I should be, just for grenade damage purposes sake. But if I want one specifically to synergize with the fish slap, would grenade damage help me at all? Let me know in the comment section. Okay. So, pause this, and then we just step back here. Doesn't, I don't think it I think we can be pretty inaccurate. Doesn't really matter. We're starting to figure this out a little bit. Fighting with our brains now. Very cool. All right. So we got to see a bit of the plot of Borderlands 4, which is Elpis slams into this cloaked veil. And my brother's got a pretty big theory about that. I won't go into it, but from the the main guess is from the at least the lore perspective is that we are going to the home world of the iridians the people who in who inhibited or they were advancements in technology like their their race like they invented technology or they were technology something like that a technological based race that extended their influence across several planets but were extinct due to um as far as I know, self-sacrifice to save the universe from ultimate destruction. Which makes them really strange alien super guardian things, right? So anyways, the main theory is that we're going to their homeworld planet, which is supposedly, like, theoretically empty. Ooh, really? I didn't mess up. I messed it up that time. Which is supposed to be theoretically empty. But I don't think it's empty. There we go. As I run up and check out the loot pool, I'm just gonna throw a couple action skills, get, my, get grenades back, and then we're good to go. So I would love to go to the home world of the Iridians. It's something that's inside the Borderlands lore. It's a place that could have really great storytelling going on, and that's amazing. 
something else that they mentioned is that we're going to be seeing um, a brand new planet, right? Like the one I just talked about, but it's going to be one of the mo most diverse planets that we've ever seen. Actually, the, the creator of Lilith said that this is the most diverse planet they've ever made, that we've ever seen. Which was a hallmark of Borderlands 2, right? It, that's a big evolution from Borderlands 2 to Borderlands 3 was the evolution of... I'm sorry, Borderlands 1 to Borderlands 2 was the evolution of Pandora from a map design perspective. We started seeing much more lush environments. Um, and different kinds of environments as well, like frozen environments and lava environments and, and vegetation environments and stuff. Like all kinds of different environments, right? Rather than just arid, um, mountainous desert, right? Okay, we got a Molten Monarch. Let's go check out the parts. It's not promising to be very good, I'll be honest with you. This damage is pretty low. We're not even going to take a look at it. We're going to move on. So with that being said, with, with them talking a lot about this planet and how it might have a big influence on our story and everything like that, I'm hoping that we will be staying on this planet. For the indication that I got is that we were going to be staying on this planet for the entirety of the game. Also, make sure I'm going to be checking for cloning maddening trackers. Oh, what is that? Excuse me. That's kind of insane. No? It's got it's got weapon magazine size on it. My 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 inventory is completely full. Let's go in there. And this drops some monarchs off. Beep. If it's not elemental monarch, I honestly think that we drop it unless it's my consecutive hits one yet. This one is so good. So good. This one's good too. Fire rate's faster. Faster fire rate, same damage. Okay, we, it stays. Sleeping giant goes. Sorry, buddy. I have too much stuff in my inventory right now. This one can go. Okay, we've made four. We've made four slots. Okay, that's that's all you can ask from me. I line up. Start chucking them. Hopefully get a one shot. No one shot. Dang. All right. So this time, let's just move up a little bit. Let's do the strut tech. The strut tech right here. A little early. A little early in that, but we get we get away with it. Get, get up there, pet. I was gonna say, you trying, you trying to let him live? So... I'm hoping that we stay on this th on the planet. I think that we will be staying on the planet, and that really that really does give me hope that maybe I can get more immersed into the world now that I'm not taking pit stops in a spaceship. I know, like pit stops in a spaceship is a really cool design philosophy. Uh, there's a reason why it's like kind of like goaded in the sci-fi space. But it did definitely push the game more in a sci-fi direction when honestly I I I don't necessarily think I like the sci part of it so much. You know, I kind of preferred the fantasy over the science. You know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping that the move to one planet might kind of simplify the the setting a bit. Is what I'm hoping for at the end of the day. These one shots are getting pretty nice. Ooh, a monarch. Let's go. And, it and when you do it this way, the enemies don't spawn, which greatly increases our clear time. I don't think this will be any good for us. Okay. We go again. The next thing that they talked about was four was the fact that there was going to be four new vault hunters. And I watched some of reactions. I watched the morning after kill reaction video to it. And he was like, yeah, we know this, of course. And a lot, and his take on the whole thing was like, they didn't tell us very much of anything besides that it's not a multiverse. Which the multiverse theory didn't, I didn't really, I wasn't too sure where that was coming from. Like I, I kind of get it, but I, I don't think that they were going that way, especially because it was just like help us. Like, I don't know. To me, it seemed like it, a re to me, it looked like it was a veil, a cloaked veil, or like a, a technological veil of some sort, like something that someone would design to shroud themselves. That's what it looked like to me off rip. And that's it turns out that's what it was. I'm not saying that I'm a 
you know that i'm a, a genius or anything like that but i'm just telling like you telling you my god's honest truth i what i saw originally was what ended up being so no multiverse but they ended up saying that there was going to be four new vault hunters and then they started talking about their vault hunter philosophy which is really cool because i think vault hunters and character design is one of the strengths and potentially the greatest strengths of, of borderlands is the character design so getting insights into that was something i was very much interested in and we, we actually got to learn a little bit about what they think about going in um one of the developers oh that's not a bad one but it's not going to be the best and i'm not going to take it one of the designers said that the first was well, something they're looking to do, to do is fulfill the promise of the character meaning that if if you read the skill tree it's something that i talk about all the time and i call it like um, end game fantasies can i fulfill the end game fantasy of a character and in league of legends and something like that the end game fantasy of a character there's so many characters that you can experience all these different end game fantasies in in borderlands there's only four vault hunters which means yes you're going to get a guaranteed you need to have at least four end game fantasies fulfilled but in this game right you need at least four but realistically you need a lot more than that to satisfy the player base because each vault hunter is supposed to be able to fulfill multiple end game fantasies for instance flak right he's got a multiple projectile rapid fire shredder build but flak also um should have had from the start a pet build that could match that because his name is beast master you know so like a big complaint that flak players have had for a long time is that pet builds don't are just are not good um there's no way to push i don't think there's any way to really push a, a pet build to to being able to, to to kill things faster than any other kind of build which is a, which is a shame because it's beast master let me know if i'm wrong about that in the comment section but i know that like i know that you can like kill tront one shot tront with a pet and maybe even kill kill a volt with pets but i'm talking about like the seer i'm talking about um the true trials bosses you know this is these are the kinds of bosses that that i'm talking about when it comes to dealing damage and the pets just don't so fulfilling that and the promises is something that they talked about and as some, that's 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 a hope that i have they live up to i really i really hope they live up to that because that's a big part of what league of legends excels in so much is that they deliver on the end game fantasies of their characters they do they always have and something that borderlands is capable of as well is providing that in game fantasy across multiple different characters and across multiple different skill trees so theoretically on launch if each vault hunter has three skill trees you would like to be able to have each one of them be the major contributor to an end game viable build that can clear raids and clear mobs given the right gear roles so that's 12 total end game fantasies that they are trying to not only create but also balance right in a way that is me in a way that makes sense to both not only them but to the player base so that it's a tough job 12 different end game fantasies on launch and they oh haven't always done a great job but i think they know what to like what they're what to achieve it's just the difficulty of getting there is just i don't know to me it feels extremely difficult to to get to that end game you know to not necessarily i'm not talking about like pushing through the end game content i'm talking about like can they make each build viable without without completely you know throwing it off the whack of the entire gaming process right if your if your build is just barely too powerful right or barely too weak it can throw off the entire experience of the game and it really affect with the p way people perceive the narrative which I do think greatly affects Borderlands 3. So they, they have an uphill battle when it comes to character creation, but Gearbox does create good characters. I actually did not see the design of the Seeker of the Seeker character. Um, 
from the new Risk of Rain 2 DLC. But I've heard that it's... I know the DLC is completely janked, and I haven't heard anything about the character itself. I'm hoping... I'm, I'm assuming the character has good design. But... They have an uphill battle, because the more Vault Hunters that they create, the more characters that they create, yes, they're getting better at creating characters, and there's there's definitely an element to that. It's like, the more characters I create, the better I get at making them. But at the same time, um, every time you make a character and you use certain developmental philosophies, or if you use, like, for instance, we want a character that can blow everything up, or we want a character that can go invisible and one-shot people. Every time you redo that, Right, every time you use that, you don't want to use it the next time. So they have to, the more fresh ideas they have and create in each of the Vault Hunters, the better the Vault Hunter, the more unique the Vault Hunter. So they have to, they have to try to keep coming up with different ways to, to keep playing through these maps with brand new characters. And that's a really difficult thing to do especially in a fulfilling way when they're trying to make a long form RPG, which is why I think they could just be so good. And from a Borderlands standpoint to just make a game that focuses on pushing out simple characters and giving us 12 of them instead of giving us, instead of giving us one, one Vault Hunter that can be played three ways. But like, I think it should be a different title, not a Borderlands game, but like a, a gearbox roguelite that they just keep pushing out characters that have multi-classing like wonderlands or maybe even turn wonderlands into that right i don't that would be really really crazy and cool but so that's that's a lot of what we saw from the design design philosophy for the vault hunters was trying to fulfill the promises and something they also talked about was action skills and action skills they specifically mentioned they like fire and forget action skills stuff that like my investment into this action skill came when I got the gear and took the skills that made it better. Right? Fire and forget. I, I got the gear and I had the skills to make that stronger. Great. But they also like action skills that require you to use them properly to get effect out of them. Something like this would be like fade away, Gorillas in the Mist. If you're reloading the entire time you're in Gorillas in the Mist, then you're not getting damage. And you just, you're not 100% wasted your action skill. Because you did, did, did probably get some like time to like reset and reload, maybe get some cover or something like that. Might have thrown it right there. Yeah, I don't think I don't want to let my racks hit. I got, I'm gonna use my racks on the wall. Might have thrown my grenades. Might have. Yeah, I, t I tossed it. Okay, so I think I, I I know the pattern now. I'm doing the pattern all wrong. It's, it's spam nades to, to try to one-shot him. If he doesn't get one-shot, spam action skill to get grenades back. And then, just for a moment, and then I have to keep up the grenade spam. And if we get to this point, just action skill spam until he gets back, and then grenade spam until he dies. Okay. I think we're going to try to go for maybe one more one-shot here, and then we'll call it. Um, closing thoughts about the PAX panel and with the, with the, the art that they showed the art that they showed when i saw it i immediately felt disappointed not because the areas aren't like beautiful or whatever but because they look dark okay maybe maybe did that improperly but we'll try see if we get the one shot here we do huge they look dark they look like borderlands three zones to me like not necessarily the same architecture and design but like you know they looked like this the way the colors and the lights and everything looked that's what that's what it looked like to me. Borderlands three, and I like I like Borderlands 3's design. It's just I think a lot of enemies are hard to see with not enough contrast. I just wish the lighting was a little bit different. I just I prefer a little bit more Arcadey experience. I wouldn't mind if enemies were highlighted just so slightly in 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 red, the same way he's kind of outlined in green. You know, uh, that that's a very hot take, very hot take, and I'm not saying it because I'm using the Scorcher pet. Back it up. Let's see if we can get... We have to get two one-shots in a row. Dang! Actually, let's just stand back here. We spam action skills, and then... Yep, actually, I keep messing up this phase of it right here. I'm supposed to have a grenade there now. Oh, I did. I saved it. Okay, so we're not gonna... Video ends when I get two perfect... Two perfect one-shots in a row. How about that? And until then, we continue spam talking about the pack. So the art. More on afterkill. Stated. 
at least twice in his reaction video or in a in a new video about the risk of rain 2 dlc that they used ai art the ai art was used to make those zones i don't know how true that is there's one i don't know how true that is but if it is true i'm sad you know if it's true i'm sad i get why you would make ai art i completely understand why you would use it it saves you time saves you money but there's just something about the love of the game you know there's something about the love of the game that is missing if you use ai art i can't it's hard for me to explain Like, oh my gosh. Even with him falling to the side. Here we go. There's your second. Come on. That was two one shots in a row. Reward me. Nine volt. Okay, so what is our final number? So this is why you always enable preview. I actually didn't see that my counter wasn't going up. So here's my counter. I have access to it now. I will go back and I will count and I'll update the counter at the end. If anyways, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button. Subscribe to see more videos like this one. Leave a comment if you want me to yap about what you're saying in your comments in the next video. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.